Shalom, Bet Israel. We are meeting here to our King just to just for a few minutes that we may elaborate on the day and the time. We know that we're in the uh, Shabbat day of uh, Trump so far, which is uh, an awakening of our Ruach, our ears that we may Shema what Yahweh is speaking and saying that there may be an awakening and also to prepare us for the feast day, atonement, and Sukkot, which gives us time to prepare uh, our minds and our love that we may walk in accordance to the commandments of Yahweh our uh, God. So uh, we pray that you enjoy this uh, gathering, uh, also the teaching and the fellowship. So at this time, we're going to stand to our feet. We're going to ask that our son, King Benjamin, uh, would lead us in a word of prayer. And we'll have a song and then we'll begin. He's right up in front of you. Hallelujah. 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 Holy Spirit, it's Abba Yahweh. We have gathered here together, Abba Yahweh. On your feet, Abba Yahweh. Give the lesson of bread, Abba Yahweh. Of truth, Abba Yahweh. Of what you have told us and commanded us to Zakai. Remember, Abba Yahweh. Each one of them that bring to our memory, Abba Yahweh. We obey and do what you tell us to do, Abba Yahweh. And that way we do, Abba Yahweh, because we know all about you, Abba Yahweh. And only in you, Abba Yahweh, we have our lives, we live and have our being, Abba Yahweh, because there's nothing that we can do without you, Abba Yahweh. And Abba Yahweh, we know that you too will keep us on the straight and narrow way, Abba Yahweh. In the precious name of Yahshua, I'm going to share how you pray. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We do Barak Yahweh that we are able to gather together that we may fellowship with singleness of mind. Yes. With one purpose, and that is to please Yahweh with all of our Bro. being, with all of our might, and all of our strength. Uh, yeah. He is right out here. Uh, what I want to do in the teaching is somewhat um, go over what I read on the gathering um, at the beginning of the feast in Yahira, Leviticus chapter 23, uh, beginning at verse 4. Um, and then I want to move on concerning the atonement because it. Uh, the Feast of Trumpets is an awakening for us yeah. to Shema, yeah. to hear the blowing of the shofar, yeah. which is a warning way, uh, to prepare. True. So we want to prepare our minds in, in these days that are to come, our yeah. hearts, and both our labors, Yisrael Yael, when we work, in that quiet time that we have, yeah. that we will start searching our love and our hearts to prepare us, Yisrael Yael, for the end, yeah. for the end of all things. So I, again, I want to begin here concerning the blowing of the shofar, and also that we would remember the time of the renewing, the moon, what that represents. There are those that start their feast days concerning many a time, but well, on some times, um, at the ending of the, the cycle whereby the uh, crescent is on the other side of the moon. And then the renewing of the moon is when everything is dark. Right but we have to, as I call, remember when the Navi Im, the Zakei Im, they watched, they waited with great anticipation for the revealing of the crest, yeah. of the light, which shows the renewing Israel of, of those things in our lives in Israel. We know that when the world, the earth was, was formed, it talks about in Bereshit how it was in darkness, yeah, really. that there was no form, really. there was no light, Israel. That shows a darkness and somewhat of a death. But yet when Yahweh spoke, he said, let there be what? Light. light. Let there be a renewal. Yeah. Let the unction of my voice in my will, what I desire, be made known. Yeah. And we saw whereby life, the creation of life, of all things, the plants, the animals, especially that thing that Satan could not understand, not even, even the Melchizedek mm -hmm. concerning man. Yeah. And it was the renewing the beginning of all things, Israel. So we must remember that, the sign. It is very important. Even though there is a darkness, there is a time whereby life and to end this right now. So I want to begin here concerning that in Raira Leviticus chapter 23, verse 24. It says this. Yahweh commanded Moshe to speak to the children of Israel. So this was not this message was not to everyone. It was to the children of Israel saying in, in Israel, Yael. Are we not in a building? Mm -hmm. So we are not outside. So we are in a specific place, mm -hmm. a covering. It has a roof over the top. There's doors, there's windows, but yet we are in. Mm -hmm. Is that not right? Yes. So this expression in, it is a period of time during which an event takes place or a situation, in this case, is concerning the renewed moon, Israel. The renewed moon. The seventh month, which is expressed as the Hodesh, that's the renewal. That's the beginning of all things, Israel. It refers to the day on which the crescent in the peaks. Yeah. So that's why we had our gathering, because we knew that at that time, yeah. it was a time whereby the crescent, the light, was to be revealed unto us. The beginning, that is the proof of the beginning of the renewed moon, the first month, the yeah. seventh month, the beginning of each month, Israel. 
Again, he says, saying in the first day of the month, you should have a kodesh rest. This should be a convocation. It's a time when we gather together, we rest. In the first day of the month, as a memorial of the blowing of the shofar, a kodesh convocation. You shall do no laborious labor therein, but you shall offer an offering unto Yahweh by fire. And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, moving on into verse 27, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. So we're counting the days. Mm -hmm. After this first day, we're counting the days, ten days. He says, in that month, that seventh month, that's the time we're in now, there shall be a day of atonement. And I will speak concerning that as well. Hallelujah. Uh, it should be a day of atonement. It should be a coldest complication to you, and you shall afflict your nephesh and offer an offering made by fire unto Almighty Yahweh. Mm -hmm. You shall do no labor, no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement. It's a day of atonement. Forgive. Not just as we seek that Yahweh will forgive us of our sin. We judge our hearts. We search for those things that we know we have to clean up, that we have mm -hmm. to forsake, right. we have to cast away. Yep. It's a time of purging. But yeah. also one to another. I can't forgive him one. Mm -hmm. yep. If there is a fault or there is something that has to be taken care of, you deal with that thing. Mm -hmm. yep. Until it is resolved, he's right now. And we resolve all things through Yahshua Hamashiach. Yes. The living word. That's how yeah. we resolve all things. Yeah. Yes, right the time of forgiveness. A time to be compassionate. Having tranquility with one another. Pardoning now one that has sinned against you. That we may purge away the guilt. There will be a cleanliness of mind. There will be nothing resting on your mind or your heart against right. one or, or towards one. Just right right. Right. That we put off our unclean ways. That we reconcile with Yahweh and also the nation. He says, as I continue in verse 28, to make an atonement for you before Yahweh your Abba. For if any nephew, the Torah says, not be afflicted in that self or that in, in that same day, he shall be cut off among the nation of Israel. And whatsoever nephew is it that does any work in that same day, that nephew would be destroyed from among his people. Mm -hmm. So it's a serious time, Israel, right yeah. that we take heed. When the shofar is awakening us to prepare us to awaken, that we may enter into the feast of forgiveness, atonement, remembering what Yahshua also has done for us. And that same compassion and hava that Yahshua showed towards us. We show one to another. Yeah. We show one to another. It's a beautiful thing where we as our king can gather together. So it talks about it's as an excellent oil. Yeah. Nothing like an excellent oil in this right now. Yes. So we should let that brotherly kindness, it should flow from each and every one of us. He also says in verse 30, uh, 31 of 23, you should do no matter of labor, no work. It should be a statue forever. Continue forever, Israel, throughout your generation and all of your dwelling. Mm -hmm. And it shall be to you a Shabbat of rest, and you shall afflict your nephews, and the night give them up even at evening. From evening to evening, you shall celebrate your Shabbat. So we celebrate, we give Todah unto Yahweh. Yes. Hallelujah. In these times wow. we're able to observe, we're able to mm -hmm. succumb, to yeah. remember. Yes. Yeah. That this is a memorial, Israel. Right yeah. Yes, hallelujah. In this preparation for us. So let me just expound just for a moment, and we're going to fellowship with Israel right now, concerning the day, this time that we are approaching, mm -hmm. preparing for this time of atonement. And we know that this atonement, all things are fulfilled in Yahshua. Yeah. Yes. He's the fulfilling yeah. of the atonement. He's the fulfilling of all things, the Shabbat, he's the fulfilling of that. 
the blowing of the shofar. He's a fulfilling of that Israel era because he warned and he taught everywhere that he went concerning the last days, the preparation, making ourselves ready, Israel. So what is atonement? Atonement is a reparation or a preparing Israel, a wrong or injury. It is a time of redemption for us. There's a time of resolution for us, Israel, and compensation. But what is compensation, I think, around the world? Compensation is paying a debt. If you owe someone, and a time comes where you have to pay that bill, there is compensation. There has to be a debt that is paid. There has to be a fulfilling of that which is owed He's ready out there. So we owe, don't we owe all unto Almighty Yahweh? Mm -hmm. Yes. We owe all. Mm -hmm. So it's a time to pay up Israel. Our shortcomings, our shortfallings, our sin, our transgression to Yahweh our Allah. Mm -hmm. It's a time where all things have to be set. It cannot prolong any, any longer. We have to bring that offering or that price unto Yahweh mm -hmm. our Allah. And he isn't going to just receive or accept just anything. And he wants the payment in full, Yisrael, the Yahweh. So how do we pay? How do we bring this offering before Yahweh our Allah? How do we pray this debt that we owe to the fullness? That's what this time is representing. That's what it's all about, Yisrael. Right See, we don't have what it takes in the sense that in the time of Moshe, the offerings, the bullocks at that time, the blood flow, the sacrifices is about unto Almighty Yahweh. We all would fall yeah. short. Yeah. Yeah. And there's not enough wealth, Yisrael, Yahil, among us all. Yes, that's right. To pay the debt. No. But yet, Yahshua is the fulfilling of that yeah. debt that we owe. There's nothing else that we can offer or bring before Almighty Yahweh but the Dom of Yashu. Oh, yeah. That's all we have, the Dom of Yashu. And then we have the Muna in that Israel Yadid. That we put all of our trust, our tigva, in what Yahshua has done. Because that is the only thing, he is the only offering that is acceptable yeah. unto all my Yahweh. It's like, how do we present that unto Yahweh? It's in our obedience. It's walking after the instruction, the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. Mm -hmm. It's obeying Him in all that He commands us to do. Yahshua had to do the very same thing. Mm -hmm. Yahweh has not left us whereby we cannot accomplish that which He has commanded us. He's not going to tell us anything we can't do. He's commanded us to stop the sin and the transgression. And in our own strength, we cannot. We don't have the ability. No. But he has given us what we need. So, Rob, mm -hmm. yeah. he's given us each other to strengthen no. one another, no. to remind ourselves. No. We should remind ourselves constantly. And it's more than just the verbal aspect, but it's, it's I'm able to look at my op and knowing that my op, he is striving. Right. He is walking in the right. same path that I am. And it gives me fortitude. It gives me strength that I can press on as well. And we, we're not in this together, Israel. I mean, we're not in this on our, on our own. We're not by ourselves, but we are together as one body. We are individual, just like the individual parts of the body. You have the fingers, the thumb, the palm of the hand, the wrist, all those things which make up a complete body. That's what we are. So the body works in unison together that we may accomplish the works, the task, whatever that is needed to be done to sustain life. Is that not right? Yes, yeah. that's good. Whether it's work, labor in the garden, or having a job of responsibility, really it all boils down into this process to maintain life. Yes. And help life. So that's what we are here for. That's why we gather. 
That's why we work and labor together, one with another, that we may y'all God know one another by our labor and by our yes. work. Yes. So we are not alone. You are not alone, Israel. Yes, right uh, you have our king. You have brothers. Even though we're scattered abroad, yet we have a way we can be communicate. Yeah. Via email, text message, just simply just calling one on the cell phone or telephone. But it is a combined effort, is where you that we made a saw, that is to complete to do what Yahweh commands us. Uh, then we get here, right here, Leviticus 23 and 26. This is Yahweh appointing this day. At this time of atonement, as we enter into the time of atonement, is right there. He speaks this. And it's not the words of man, but these are the words of Almighty Yahweh. And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, Also in the tenth day of the seventh month, there is a day of atonement. It shall be a kodesh gathered together. Yah the portal unto you. You shall afflict, that is to chasten, that is to deal harshly. It also is to sing Israel. What does a song do? Good. When you sing a song, what you say is it's a kind of repetition, repetition or reminder of Israel. Of words. That it brings excitement. That it brings a, 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 a concrete a foundation for us that it is a reminder that we remember Zakah. Many times that uh, songs are instituted, whether it is teaching for children, it makes it much easier to remember what is being taught when you put it into a song form. Mm -hmm. It's somewhat easier, it's fun, it's engaging that we may Zakah. Yes. So even as Dawid many times in Tehillim, it was a Tehillim unto Almighty Yahweh. But these are things which was repeated over and over again. Why? To remind himself. To remind those of the perfect workings of Almighty Yahweh, His strength and His power. And that's why many times in the song of Moshe it was sung that the children may be interested. And it brings dancing and a performance and, and engagement and toda unto Almighty Yahweh, just in the simplicity of a song. He's right here. So it's, it's a time where we say unto Yahweh our Abah, a time of gentleness. A type of reconciliation unto him that we humble ourselves. So he says that in your nephews, your love, your heart, to offer an offering made by fire unto Almighty Yahweh. That's our offering we should bring unto him. Song for Tehillim to God. Remembering what he has done for us. How he has brought us this far by a moon. And we offer all these things at the time of atonement. I'm going to read this in Jubilees. Just a few minutes, I can. We're going to sit here. We're going to fellowship. It says here in Jubilees chapter 6. I want to begin reading here at verse 1. And what this represents is the beginning of the first atonement unto Yahweh or of God. It began with Noah. It began with Noah and the ark, Israel. So it says here, and it's the same statement. I want us to Zakar to remember. And on the new month of the third month, he went forth from the ark, and he built an altar on the mountain. He made an atonement, not just for himself, but he made it for all of the earth. You hear that, Israel? He made it for all of the earth. That's what the Torah says here in Jubilee. It wasn't just for himself. It wasn't just for those that were on the ark with him. He said for all the earth. And that's what Yahshua did in Israel. His body, his blood, his offering of obedience was for the atonement for all the earth. Why did he do it that way? That no man would have an excuse or a reason why they could not obey Almighty Yahweh. So this is either this redemption in Yahshua Hamashiach, 
is either for our condemnation or it's for our justification unto Yahweh our Allah. The off, the atonement that is paid in full for us this way. Right so in that renewed month, he made an altar on that night. And he made an atonement for the earth. And he took a kid and made an atonement by its blood for all the guilt of the earth. For everything that had been on it has been destroyed. Only those, so it says, only those that were saved on the ark with Noah. So it wasn't just for Noah, those that was on the ark. It was for the sins of the whole earth. And that, was, that is what Yahshua our atonement. He is our offering is right at hand. He has made this complete atonement for us. And the place, he says, the fact thereupon, the altar. He took an ox as well, and a goat, and a sheep of the kids, and salt, and the dove, and the young of the dove. And he placed a burnt offering onto the altar. And he poured therein an offering mingled with the oil. And he sprinkled wine. And he also, he strewed fragrances. That means he sprinkled, he spread fragrance upon everything and caused an excellent smell, a fragrance to arise which was acceptable before Almighty Yahweh. So there's a fragrance that must arise from us, the Israeli. Yes. We know there's no, we know that there's no need anymore for the uh, offering up of the blood of the gulag, the goat, the sheep. But we do offer the offering in Yahshua HaMashiach. We do plead the dawn of Yahshua out of the Israel for the atonement of our sins. That's the only way that atonement, that forgiveness will come, that we can pay this debt. Yes. And it's through Yahshua HaMashiach. And it has to be a sweet smelling fragrance that is offered by fire. So that's what we do. We offer a sweet smelling fragrance by fire unto Yahweh our Allah. The fire of our praise unto God, our vigor, with all of our strength unto Yahweh our Allah. We do it with excitement, with great joy, knowing what Yahshua has done for us. What Yahweh has done for us in Him. And it continues to say this as the sweet milk smelling the excellent of this fragrance went forth in verse 4. And he made a covenant with him that there should not be any more a flood to destroy the earth. That all the days of the earth, seed time and harvest, should never cease. Cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night should not change their order, nor cease forever. You hear that, Israel? Yes. That was a covenant that was made. That Yahweh would not destroy the earth. It would not happen again by war. But it, it did say also that the order of all things would never change, did it, did it not? Yeah. So the order, even the sighting of the renewed moon, it did not change. It didn't change for Noah, neither has it changed for us now in this no. time. It has remained the same. We have lost touch. We have changed things. We have changed things to uh, to to uh, bring a light to what we believe. So it's right. the teachings, right? But everything can be proven right here in the scripture. It hasn't changed. It's remained the same. Yahweh intended there to be a pattern here for all things. Yeah. Did you hear that? He talked about the renewed month, yeah. did he not? Yeah. There are months at times whereby it's cold, there's winter, there's summer, there's the springtime. Nothing has